Uh, Admiral, good to see you. I appreciated our conversation, and uh, congratulations on your nomination. Uh, I want to start by revisiting something that you and I talked about at, at some length when we visited, uh, which is uh, the situation in Taiwan. Both Deputy Secretary Hicks and Admiral Davidson have testified that the U.S. should maintain the ability to defeat a fait accompli scenario in Taiwan. Do you agree with that? Yes, Senator. Do you think the department should also prioritize preparations for a Taiwan scenario so that we'll be able to uh, deter China from attacking Taiwan should they attempt to do so? Uh, yes, Senator, that credible deterrence forward is absolutely required with uh, the correct forces, the right magnitude of the forces, and the readiness of those forces. Very good. The Deputy Secretary and Admiral Davidson have also testified that a strategy of denial is essential for deterring uh, Chinese aggression. Secretary Austin said the same thing uh, to me in response to a question that I had for him for the record. Do you agree with that, that a strategy of denial is, is essential for deterring China? Yes, Senator. Um, let me ask you about a, a question that you were posed earlier by one of my colleagues. You were asked about the importance of conventional deterrence in the Indo-Pacific. But I just want to get clear on your views here. The, the necessity of conventional deterrence, which I think we agree on, is not, does not mean that nuclear deterrence has any less of a role, doesn't it? I mean, wouldn't you agree that our nuclear deterrent provides a critical backstop uh, in, in, to our conventional deterrent, and, and that both are necessary uh, to be able to effectively uh, deter uh, China? Uh, yes, Senator, absolutely. If I gave that impression, then I apologize. Mm -hmm. uh, you also said earlier that uh, today that the threat of a Chinese invasion of Taiwan is much closer to us than most think. Uh, you and I talked about this at some length. Is, is it fair to say that this threat, when you said earlier, much closer to us than most think, is it, is it fair to say that this threat could materialize well before 2035 or, or some of those very later dates that, that folks have put out there? Yes, Senator, I believe it could. And, and is it fair to say that we need to act now if we're going to prevent this threat from materializing in the future? Yes, Senator, absolutely. A strong posture forward linked with our allies and partners, uh, I believe, is the leading path for prevention. Very good. Uh, reports have indicated that Taiwan's upcoming quadrennial defense review is going to emphasize the need for Taiwan to adopt an asymmetrical defense posture. This, again, is something you and I visited about. Can you just give us a sense, why is it so important for Taiwan to invest in asymmetrical capabilities, especially those that are low-cost, high-impact? Uh, Senator, as, as we discussed a bit, uh, the resources they have require them to be spent in the correct manner to have the most effectiveness against the possible threat. Uh, I'm encouraged by some of those capabilities that they have purchased, and I'm encouraged by the capabilities that they're investing in in an indigenous fashion uh, for their defense. Uh, the example I would give you is the Harpoon system. Uh, I thought uh, it was very thoughtful uh, and the right capability for one example. What can uh, the United States do to help encourage Taiwan to adopt a more asymmetric defense posture as quickly as possible? I think as a part of the Taiwan's Relation Act, uh, offering the right capabilities uh, with the right support uh, is the best way to ensure that they certainly understand all of their options. They get to make their own choices, but by providing uh, Credible, realistic options with recommendations would be helpful. Uh, let me ask you uh, uh, about something else we discussed um, on the phone. The, the Guam Defense Act has been Indo-PACOM's top un unfunded priority for the last three years. Just generally speaking, give us a sense of why Guam is, is so important from a military operational standpoint. It's certainly in a strategic location west of the international date line. Uh, uh, distant enough to be able to protect our forces, uh, muster our forces, and as you know, there's over 20,000 service members on Guam. Uh, so combined with the 170,000 American citizens, we certainly uh, are responsible to protect those people. But the strategic location uh, is critical to be able to uh, provide forces quickly in the area we need them. Let me just uh, ask you, finally, uh, the Quad appears to be forming the basis for a, a regional coalition to stand up to 
Chinese aggression. How, how do you see the Quad contributing to deterrence in the Indo-Pacific now and in the future? I think it's extremely important when you look at uh, India as the world's largest democracy, combined with uh, three other nations of shared values and beliefs. Uh, when a organization of that magnitude, magnitude comes together, it would generate concern uh, for anyone with an opposite opinion. 